Welcome to the Body Project Podcast. I'm your host, Katherine Tanaka, fitness, nutrition, and accountability specialist, and the host and producer of this podcast, the Body Project Podcast. It has been over six months since I have been in the podcast conversation. For those of you that have been following along for a while, um, back when I stopped doing this podcast, I was dealing with a physical ailment. I was diagnosed with a grade two plus spondylolisthesis, which is when the vertebrae is actually out of alignment with the rest of your spine. And even though I was diagnosed with this, oh my goodness, almost three years ago now, I was really trying to manage that in ways that I didn't realize um, I was being a block in. And today's episode is actually a non-scripted episode, no guests today. And actually we're going, we are live in Clubhouse uh, doing a Clubcast about the Body Project podcast coming back. And at the time when I put a pause on the podcast, we were still in the midst of the pandemic. And some of you know that when the pandemic hit back in March of 2020, I pivoted the conversation in the podcast, right? Talking about optimizing your health and fitness wasn't really top of mind for most people. It was really about, um, really about how do we manage during this uncertain time? And so I brought to you guys some of the best fitness mindset experts in health, mental health, and well being um, to really talk about how do we manage in times of uncertainty? And I know that those conversations have served so many. And in fact, they are still serving many because um, unbeknownst to me, I've been getting (laughs) tens of thousands of downloads around this conversation. And so, you know, I share this because this is still a very relevant conversation today. And I wanted to share a little bit, even though I did at the time, Uh, share a little bit about why I took a pause on the podcast conversation. When you put boundaries in your life and when you put yourself first, you are giving a distinct single signal to your subconscious, to yourself, to your personal energetic body that you are worthy, worthy of the time, of the space, of what needs to be done to heal. And I didn't really recognize this at the time that I put my podcast on pause. At the time, it really was because I didn't have the bandwidth. I was, you know, working full time, training clients one on one. I was running my online studio and then my uh, my in person studio, and then my online studio in COVID, really supporting my clients to show up for themselves. And then I was running my online program. I run a my signature hundred day protocol where I support busy working women to transform the trajectory of their lives through fitness as the gateway to their greatness. And because of that, I never, um, I just, and I was running this podcast, right? So three to five hours a week was taken up by the Body Project podcast, really curating the conversations, finding incredible humans to interview and really bringing you as much value as possible, right? And on top of that, you know, all the other business behind the scene pieces that go on, like, being the accounts receivable, being all the facets of my business and having to be a mom to me, my two incredible kids, and also wifing it at the same time. And because of all these pieces, I just didn't have the time to take on my health, right? With a grade two spondylolisthesis, um, I was in conversations with one of the top back surgeons in Toronto, uh, Dr. Raja Ramprasad about what I would need to do surgically to um, address address this grade two and this severe stenosis on my left side and this moderate to severe on my right side, right? And when I spoke to him back in, I guess it was end of May, early June of last year about this consideration, it was really about doing a full spinal fusion, right? I have the spondylolisthesis and the spondylolysis at the level of 
L4, L5, S1. So my L5 is pressed forward um, in my back. And so at the time, the, co the consideration was really, how do we fix this? It's a grade two plus. I have severe stenosis on my left side. So what I feel, I don't actually experience any back pain. I get this weird nerve um, nerve sensation down my left side. And what's been happening is that my gait is changing on my left side. I'm getting atrophy along my left leg. And it just creates a whole host of issues, especially because I'm in the movement space. I'm moving my body. And when you have a weakness and when you have nerve loss on one side, your body starts patterning to compensate for that weakness, that dysfunction, that injury, whatever it is, right? And so I really needed to step back and find a way to insert self-care, namely physio, rehab, strength and conditioning, chiro, really to get into why is my back giving out on me, right? And I've discovered a lot in the last six plus months, and I will share, save that for another episode. My intention of bringing back the Body Project podcast is really to be of service, right? My work is really to support my amazing clients to move their bodies, to show up, because I believe that the best project you could ever work on is yourself. And in saying that, I believe that movement is medicine, right? Movement based on evidence-based research, allows you to get into your breath, allows you to physiological cha physiologically change your um, hormone response, how you're able to manage your um, mental health. And so fitness to me is really the gateway to your well-being, to your greatness. And so I believe that this conversation is as important as the work I do one-on-one -on -one with my clients. And my intention was actually to bring this conversation back probably about a month ago. As we all know, the world has been a interesting place of expansion and contraction and rejigging and resetting, not only with COVID, um, but with all the atrocities against the Black community, um, with George Floyd, with all those things that we as a collective humanity really need to take a look at of how we are advancing ourselves and each other and supporting ourselves in deregulating de and de-escalating the conversation towards racism and shifting how we fundamentally love each other. And there has been a lot of hatred against the Asian population. It may not be in the news as readily as um, Black Lives Matter, and that's okay. I, I have a hard time standing by the sidelines when I see significant injustice done. You know, I was bullied as a child for many, many years. And so, you know, I have a listening for those that are being, um, that with the, where there is injustice. And so when there was a lot of Asian hate coming about, I mean, for those of you that know, I really took a stand when all this Black Lives Matter movement started. I actually donate money to some Black Lives Matter movements. I am an advocate. I've started a non-for-profit organization and I'm working to create a non-for-profit um, fitness uh, offering in schools to actually support inequality, uh, to increase accessibility, increase diversity, increase um, equitability in the space of fitness and young people, right? That's where we can make a real difference. And I know for me, fitness was a huge saving point in my life, a huge saving point in my life. And I recognize how grateful and how fortunate I am. And I'm so grateful for my amazing clients, but it comes with privilege, right? It costs something for people to be able to afford my services. And I'm so grateful. And I, I receive the abundance of that so, so magically. 
I also recognize that there are so many that don't have access to this. And so how can I step up and give access? How can I step up and increase the equitability and the accessibility and equality around getting in your body, getting in your breath in a way that can be transformative, right? And so that is a part of my mission. But also in saying that, the conversation around the Asian hate is very dear to my heart. For those of you that don't know, Tanaka is a Japanese last name. I am half Japanese. My father is Japanese from Hokkaido, uh, a little town in the mountains of Furano in Japan. And I feel a responsibility as I do with my clients, right? As a fitness professional, we are trained to request of our clients to get comfortable with the discomfort in their body right? We on purpose challenge our clients and push our clients to move beyond themselves past that threshold of comfort. And so as a fitness professional, I think I'm capable and, and um, well-equipped to have this conversation. And so my intention with this month being Asian Heritage Month is to get into conversations with really powerful fitness professionals, movement professionals, that are also of Asian descent, right? Because I think that we can have really progressive conversations that will move the needle forward, using fitness philosophies as the access point to encourage these conversations of how can we bridge the gap? How can we elevate ourselves as a community, the uh, Asian community that will also elevate all boats, right? The tides rise and also all the boats rise. And so I believe that collectively, if we can elevate this conversation, right, that we can collectively elevate the entire conversation of many. And so, and this goes back to a post that I did today about showing up for yourself and being in control of your environment, when you start showing up for yourself in movement, and I tell my clients this almost every day, and they probably hear me on their shoulder, like Catherine is reminding you to show up for yourself. You are telling your body, you are telling yourself that you are worthy of this time, of your self-investment. And this is actually a really important conversation in the context of me supporting busy working women, right? Busy working women, when they are pushing in their careers or they're peaking in their careers, it often becomes around that career and boundaries often get broken down. And naturally, biologically, women are nurturers. And oftentimes we are really great at giving to others, but not as good as fueling and optimizing and giving to ourselves. And so as I move you through this conversation in this amazing month of Asian heritage, we're going to be touching on those principles of how do you put in your own boundaries? How do you elevate? your greatness? How do you use fitness as the access point of alleviating the stress, of alleviating the, of elevating your mental well-being being from a place of self-love, self-care, and all of it? Anyways, thank you for joining me on this conversation. Please stay tuned as later this week, I'm going to be sitting down with a friend of mine, Miss Carmen Puyo. She is of Asian heritage. She will give us the entire rundown of the background of her ancestry because there is some Filipina back there. There is some uh, Chinese back there, but she is an incredible leader in the fitness space in Canada. And I'm excited to speak to her to dive into not only Asian Heritage Month, but to dive into the conversation around movement being magical, of fitness philosophies, allowing us to elevate, right? Raising the tide to raise all boats. Thank you for joining me. As always, I appreciate you. Please, wherever you are watching or listening to this, please rate, review, and subscribe. It makes an immense difference in the trajectory of this conversation, getting to others that need it as well. Bye for now.